Well, hello again. Um, been a little while since I've done anything on the screw drive vehicle. Uh, sometimes life catches up to you and I have to find time. But anyways, as you can see from the uh, dust on it, a uh, little bit of neglect. But uh, I have, however, decided on a couple things. And one of them is the power plant. And the second thing is I've invested in a couple drive motors for the screws. So I'll uh, show you what I picked up here. All right, let's start with the power plant. So just picked this up the other day, and this is a 15 horsepower motor, um, and it's just a Chinese uh, clone engine, uh, cheaper motor. Uh, got it at a good price and it was on sale. So um, the reason I chose the 15 horsepower is because from previous knowledge on my tractor, I know that was about a 16 horsepower tractor, uh, granted it's going to have a little more torque than this motor because it is an older cast iron motor but I know that the machine did work with that amount of power before so I figure that it should probably work with that amount of power with hydraulics even with my losses because I didn't find that motor was really laboring very much so also size um, get much bigger than this and it's not really going to fit into that quad frame this one itself is going to be a little bit big but um, I am going to lose some components here um, that there's really no need for because I mean right now I'm looking at a total height of about oh at the highest point almost 17 inches but uh, uh, the system already has a fuel tank so I don't need this uh, I'm definitely gonna have to make an exhaust system for it that's gonna come out the back like get some kind of motorcycle muffler or what have you so I can delete the uh, muffler and then as far as the uh, intake side of things I don't really need this big bulky air cleaner uh, probably gonna have to make some kind of snorkel system if it's gonna be amphibious get the intake coming up so pretty much that's gonna get rid of all that stuff I still will need an air filter but and when you do that giving you a pretty decently low profile motor. Uh, it does have electric start and I know that's a little bit heavy because I'm going to need a battery as well but it does also charge a battery so I'm going to be able to run my lights if I want to and who knows by the time I finish this I might be about 75 so I might not be able to pull it over as easy as I had hoped to when I'm only uh, 33 right now I think. Uh, anyways so that's uh, progress as far as I'm concerned. Uh, definitely inspirational anyway, so I can start really thinking about what the hell's going on here and uh, where to go from here. Next thing I did pick up were these two hydraulic motors. Uh, I'll talk a little bit more about these later when I really get into the hydraulic section uh, as far as what kind of motors they are. Uh, there's basically two reasons why I chose these motors. One is because they're super cheap and they're in the bargain bin. <laughs> and two, because they can uh, handle uh, the uh, radial load that I want so I do plan on supporting the one end of the screw with the motor and these are capable of upwards of 500 pounds uh, pushing down on this uh, whereas a smaller motor not so much so you're not going to want to support the screw with the motor but uh, pretty cool picked up two of them oh another good thing about them is they don't have case drains some hydraulic motors have a drain on the back where they bleed off pressure so that's one extra line I'm not going to need, but super cheap. Whether they're going to work with my, I know they're big, uh, like I said, I'll get into that later. But uh, I think the first order of business here is I'm going to strip the machine down and we're going to see if this motor is even going to fit in the frame. So I did toy around with um, which way to possibly mount this motor. Because it's a hydraulic pump on there, it doesn't necessarily have to be mounted in any position. I could spin it in any direction, really, to make it fit. Uh, but after kind of measuring everything and uh, deciding on 
what made the most sense. I think I did end up going with a more traditional mount here. And um, I got it about as far forward as I can. And the angle of it lines up good. Now the pump is definitely sticking out. It will, like I have these two little rods here just kind of representing the extra length of the hydraulic pump. But I think my foot will tuck under there pretty nice. Probably have some, uh, my foot holds back towards here anyways. So I'd say that gives me pretty ample room for uh, maneuvering. I should be able to stand up for when I'm in the water or whatever. <laughs> anyways. So I'm going to make up some mounts for that. I actually have the old mounts from the quad, so I'll use those. So for whatever strange reason, I seem to only have three rubber mounts left over from the quad. I don't know if there only was three or what the deal is there, but that'll work fine, I think so. What I've done is I've uh, fashioned up three of these little angle brackets and they're just cut out of a piece of square tubing and ground to shape and then I also drilled a hole in them and that is so that they will accept the rubber mounts and I'm going to put these on the side of the frame I'm going to since I only have three I'm going to go one here one there and then one on the opposite side where the pump is and that's what I'll affix my mounts to and then my motor plate will sit on that three points and then bolt to the motor in four points. And that's gonna allow me to give it a little adjustability. So I'll go ahead and weld these on. So I got the motor turned upside down here and I'm going to make a mount plate for it the motor will bolt to and then the actual rubber mounts will bolt to that plate. The reason I'm doing that is just because of the configuration of the frame. Um, the way I make these templates, the easiest way I've found is grab an old piece of paper, uh, place it over top. Instead of trying to measure all this stuff, uh, you need a dirty workbench in order for this to work properly. This is kind of like a dusty bench template, but anyways. So you want to have some uh, blackness on your hands. And then you're just going to, uh, with one hand, hold your paper in place. And your dirty hand, you're going to rub your mount spots. So if your workshop's too clean, you won't be able to do this uh, properly. But see that very well on the camera but you can see very precisely where my mount holes there and I can just uh, using a center punch mark that right through onto a piece of metal well, I hope you can get a decent view of this here um, what I've done is I've mapped out my three mount points on this piece of 3 16 steel plate and this is the two on the one side that's the two on the other side this being the front of the machine and now my template's going to come into a play here so um, this is the basically footprint of my motor and i know that i want this left side of the motor about an inch and three quarters off the mount. So I'll go ahead and mark that. One and three quarters. Like so. And because this motor is um, just running a pump and I'm not aligning any chains or anything, it doesn't exactly have to be an exact science as far as it being perfectly square to the frame, but doing the best I can anyways. So I already center punched the holes where I'm going to put the bolts through. I just cut these notches and now I can see th the line through my notches here. So. 
I know I want the motor a little bit ahead of the actual mounts. Oh, right about there. That's where I want it to be. So at that point, all I gotta do is go in with my pen. There we go. So I got my rubber mounts, I got my motor mounts. I'll go ahead and drill those out and I'm gonna plasma cut out all the excess to make a mount plate. It's not pretty, but It'll do the job. I'm still gonna grind it all up and round the edges over to make it a little more interesting looking, but I mean, it's under the motor anyway, so. Uh, I think it's strong enough, and it doesn't weigh that much, considering, so. Got my mounts. Engine plate. This. So when we see if all the measurements are actually right, I still have a fair amount of clearance here to put my bolts in for my front links, which was part of the reason I lifted it up like this. Not half bad though. I think that's going to be more than adequate. Well, I'll clean that up a little bit and then I'm going to go do some shopping and uh, we'll talk about some hydraulics. I hope some of you guys know or girls know something about hydraulics because I'm really kind of struggling, but I think I got something figured out. Anyways, take it easy.